shepherding is all about. It's about caring and loving the sheep. Boy, I tell you, I didn't get one amen on that. Caring and loving the sheep. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you could, I'd like you to um, open up that Bible to 2 Peter. Go to 2 Peter. Amen. And we're going to go to chapter 1. But while you're, while you're going there, amen, we know that um, Marion Hales went home to be with the Lord. And Marion Hales had a life. Amen. That exemplified God. Amen. When when you looked at Marion Hales and when we looked at the way he lived his life, he never let a negative word come out of his mouth. As a matter of fact, it wasn't but two weeks ago he was up here and he testified. No negativity while he was while he was fighting cancer. Hello, somebody. Amen. Comes out of my mouth. No negativity. He was always positive. He was always upbeat. He always said the right thing. Amen. He always talked the talk and he walked the walk. Amen. And the scripture that exemplifies his life is 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 that says, I have fought the good fight. He fought the good fight. Amen. He finished his course. He kept the faith. He kept the faith. Amen. Marion Hales was somebody who fought the good fight. He fought the good fight of faith. I never, I'll be honest with you, I never saw anybody go through the pain right. that Marion Hales went through. Amen. And kept marching on. Yeah. And kept walking with Jesus. Right. And had a thing that we call no quitting sense. In other words, he didn't have enough sense to quit. He didn't have enough sense. Amen. I remember when he broke his femur. He broke his femur. Amen. And you know what he did? He came to church. He came to church with a broken femur. I remember it. Amen. And not only that, he hobbled in on crutches. Amen. He said, I wanted to stick with the cane, but I had to go to the crutches. What a testimony. What a testimony. Amen. After people, they stay up late watching a movie on Saturday night. They can't get up for 11 o'clock church. Come on, somebody. You know that's right. You know that's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember, glory to God. Amen. You know, when he came in here, and then he was in a wheelchair, and he came in here on a wheelchair. But you know what? He was fighting the good fight. Amen. He was fighting the good fight. Amen. Hallelujah. And I completely believe, amen, in the healing anointing for Marion Hams. Why? Because he wasn't moved by what he saw, and he wasn't moved by what he thought. What he was moved by was the Word of God. Amen. amen. And you know what I think? I think his body just wore out. That's all it was. His body wore out. Amen. But you know what? Even though he went home to be with the Lord, it doesn't make the Word of God any less true. Amen. The Word of God is still true. Yes. And I want to tell you something. The problem is never with the Lord. Amen. amen. It's never with the Lord. Amen. And as you go along in God, amen, I want to tell you something. I know I say it a lot, right? But the time is going to come, you're going to have a why God. Oh, yeah. That's right. Why God this, did this happen? Lord, why did you allow this to happen? Amen. Well, I want to tell you something. It's a thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ came to give us life and that we can have that life more abundantly. Amen. And you know, we need to keep looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was before him, yes. amen, endured the cross, amen. endured the shame, amen. sat down at the right hand of God, oh, sat down, yeah. consider him that endured such hostility from sinners, yes. from sinners. Now with us, a lot of time those sinners are the demonic forces we fight. That's right. Man. Amen. We all fight devils. If you don't know that you fight a devil, you know what that means? You're just getting whooped by him. Amen. That's right. That's all that means. You're just getting whooped by him. You just got your eyes closed to what's happening. Amen. We all fight devils. Glory to God. And you know what? Here in the final hour, you're going to be fighting more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because the accuser of our brethren, Satan, who stands before God and accuses you day and night has been cast down. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But here's good gospel news for you. 
Because he's been cast down, hallelujah, he's not up there to hinder your prayer. Amen. He's not up there to hinder the move of God and the work of God, hallelujah. So as soon as you pray, it gets right through. Yeah. Amen. Amen. you got to have no quit sense. Amen. Daniel prayed for 21 days. Hello, somebody. Come on. He fasted for 21 days. Amen. <coughs> hallelujah. And you know what? If he had quit, he wouldn't have got the breakthrough. <coughs> he could have given up and quit. Amen. And you know what? I want to tell you something. Fasting's hard work. Amen. Amen. Praying's hard work. Glory to God. People don't see it that way. Amen. You know what? They did a study of preachers. Pastors. People who preach on the pulpit like I do. And they said, how much time do you spend in prayer a week? You know what the average was? Three minutes. Three minutes. You know what that means? They're so busy. They're so busy. They got all they got time to do is put their sermons together. They don't have time for prayer. Amen. That's why your pastor needs to be full time. Amen. You know what? We have prayer here. Amen. We are, amen. Yeah, give the Lord a hand and clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. And Monday when I'm home, we pray at home. Hello. We don't we don't take a vacation from prayer. No. We don't take a vacation from prayer. We pray on Monday. Amen. We're here praying at 9 o'clock every Tuesday. Amen. We pray Wednesday. We pray Thursday. Amen. And uh, we're actually getting a pretty good crowd on Thursday. Amen, Amen somebody. <laughs> we're actually getting a pretty good crowd on Thursday. But what do we do? We pray. Why? Because prayer releases power. Prayer releases dominion in your life. Prayer releases power favor in your life where you're not walking by faith, you're walking by the miracle hand of God. Amen. And God wants to release in you a rhythm of miracles in your life. He wants to give you hope beyond the scope of human limitations. Amen. Amen. You need to have hope beyond the scope of human limitations. But you got to seek the Lord because the proof of desire is in the pursuit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If you truly <laughs> desire the Lord, you're going to run after him. You're going to yeah. seek him. You're going to track him down. You're going to chase him. Hallelujah. Amen. If you truly desire the Lord, you're going to pursue the Lord. You pursue the Lord like God pursued you. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. He sent his son to die for you. Hallelujah. He was looking for you. Amen. You know the, product, the story of the prodigal son, right? He was out looking. The father was out looking for the son. He was hunting the son down. People say, I find God. You didn't find God. You didn't find God. He found you. Amen. He sought you out. He sought you. He caught you. He saved you. He delivered you. He loved you. He restored you. He restored you. He gave you a dream. He gave you a vision. And he gave you purpose in this life. Amen. It was God that found Abraham in the Earl of the Chaldees. It was God that found Jacob at Bethel. It was God that found Moses in the midst of the burning bush. In other words, God found them and God found you. Can I get a witness in the house? Hallelujah, somebody. Why? Because he loves you. He loves you. Amen. You know what we did during praise and worship? We loved on God. Amen. We loved on God. You got to love on God. You got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your soul, and all your strength. You got to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Amen. Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, Hallelujah, verse two. Grace, God's unmerited favor, and peace where there's nothing missing and nothing broken. Be multiplied. Notice God wants it to multiply. He wants grace and peace to multiply to you. Amen. That's right. Grace and peace be multiplied. You can increase in the grace of God on your life. You can increase with the peace of God on your life. Paul said, having nothing, I don't have anything, but yet at the same time, I possess all things. All right. All right. Amen. You need to see yourself like Paul saw himself. Having nothing, yet possessing all things. Amen. He said, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Amen. Hallelujah. You know why people don't know how to abound? Because they don't know how to be abased. They don't know how to be abased. If you know how to be abased. In other words, I'm going to tell you something about Marion Hales. He knew how to be abased. 
He knew how to act when he was in pain. He knew how to act when the press was on him. Glory to God. He knew how to act. Amen. How did he act? Amen. He didn't let his circumstances control his mind, his will, and his emotions. He let the Bible control his mind, his will, and his emotions. Marion Hales taught us something very important. He taught us how to go through. Amen. Because you're all going to go through. I'm telling you right now, you're all going to go through. Amen. Amen. So grace and peace be multiplied. When you're going through, grace and peace is going to be multiplied. Amen. Unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the knowledge. In other words, as your knowledge. What's your knowledge? He's not talking about your head knowledge. No. He's not talking about your head knowledge. What's he talking about? That knowledge when you know him. When you know him. When you spend time with him. Hallelujah. When you're intimate with him. Some of you, like when you go out fishing. And you're intimate, right? With that fish. You reel that thing in, right? You're studying how to catch that fish, right? You got that depth binder to get that fish and you're trolling along and you're looking at that depth binder and you're searching, you're searching and you're looking, where are they? Well, let's cast it over here and they try over here. Well, it's not there. Let's cast it over there and they try it over there. And all of a sudden, what happens? They land it, right? Glory to God, they start reeling it in. And if you're like, Pastor Greg, what you're going to do, you're going to say, I bet you that fish is up in the weeds. I don't care about that lure. I might just throw it up in the weeds, glory to God, and roll you and pull you in the big catch. <laughs> What am I saying? Your catch is in the weeds. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to throw that lure up in the weeds. In other words, it don't matter what's coming your way. It might not look good, but you throw it up in the weeds anyway. In other words, no matter what comes your way, let your light shine. Let your light shine and trust in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's in the dark times. Sometimes it's in the hard times when God makes you and God creates you and God delivers you. Hallelujah. And your faith is renewed to God. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Verse 3, for according to his divine power, he has given us to uh, he has given unto us all things. All means all. That pertain to life. What kind of life? The God kind of life. The life and the spirit and godliness by the knowledge of him who has called you, called you to glory, called you to virtue. Amen. You might be called to preach. You might be called to teach. You might be called with the Abrahamic anointing on you. You know what? But the one thing you got to worry about, the one thing you need to be concerned about, you don't have to be concerned about any of that. You don't have to be concerned about what you're going to do for the Lord. All you have to be concerned about is knowing Him. Because if you know Him, everything else will take care of itself. If you're following Him, if you're following him, to know him, amen, he will position you, amen, he will bring you through, he will give you the desires of your heart, all you have to do is run after him, glory to God, and he will make it come to pass, hallelujah, somebody give the Lord a great big amen for that, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, I'll tell you something, this is, this is a short story I tell a lot, amen, but you know, God told me that Donna was going to be my wife when I was living in Chicago and went on a mission trip to a mission trip, amen, down to Ohio, amen, to witness on the street for the NFL Football Hall of Fame weekend where they had this great big party. And while I was down there, amen, the Lord spoke to me and he said that redhead sitting in front of you, seven seats, is going to be your wife, amen. Well, you know what, before that, I made the decision I wasn't going to get married. I said, Lord, I'm a good Catholic boy. Amen. I'm going to go away and I'm going to be a monk. Amen. Amen. And I was marching up Highway 204. Amen. With a 105 backpack, a 105 pound backpack on my back. And I got a few miles up and a police officer stopped me. And he said, 
You can't go that way. You can't walk up this highway. I said, I can't. He said, no. So you know what I did? I said, what am I going to do now? If I keep walking, he's going to pick me up and throw me in jail. Amen. So you know what I did? I turned around and I went home. I said, well, Lord, plan B. Plan B. And I just happened to land at different places. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a great big amen for that. Hallelujah. Amen. If I get into that story, I'll never get off it. Thank you, Lord God. And we got a lot of, we got a lot of ground to cover and a short time to get it in. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So according to his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness by the knowledge of him who's called us to glory and called us to virtue. Glory is the power of God upon you. Glory is when you put your hand to something, God puts his hand to something. Amen. That's glory. You need to walk in the glory of God. As a matter of fact, God desires you to walk in his glory. Virtue is that power, that Holy Ghost power, that Holy Ghost power that wells up on the inside of you. Amen. When the woman with the issue of blood reached out and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, amen, Jesus said, who touched me? Of course, the disciples, being in the natural, said, everybody's touching you, Lord. They're all bumping into you. No, somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. You can touch the Lord. Amen. You can touch the Lord. When you touch the Lord, you know what happened? Power came out of Jesus. <laughs> Miracle working power. Wet water walking kind of power. Healing kind of power came out of Jesus. You can always get a miracle from Jesus. You can always get the power from Jesus. Amen. You know why you, you know why we get together in church? Amen. Why? Because it produces the corporate anointing and we experience the power and the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's all about experiencing the power and the presence of God. God wants you to experience his power. He wants you to experience his presence. Amen. The church is where you go to get refreshed. Amen. God told 500 people to go up to the upper room and pray. He said, and wait and tarry for the Holy Ghost. Well, 120 made it. Amen. He told 500, 120 made it. But you know what? It was in that atmosphere with 120 seeking the Lord, praying, tarrying, looking for God, where the power of God fell. Where the power of God fell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fellowship. You want a definition for fellowship? Fellowship is when believers come together and experience the presence of God. Amen. That's fellowship. That's fellowship. There's no fellowship in believers' life without the Lord. Amen. You've got to have the Lord. That's true fellowship, where believers come together and experience the power and the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. This is why we stand on the promises of God. This is why we quote Scripture. Why? They're the promises of God. Amen. That by these, by the promises, that you might be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature of who? God. God. That's the Christos anointing. Amen. That you might be a partaker of the divine nature of God. How do you get to be a part of that divine nature? You, you escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through lust. Amen. In other words, you escape that lust. Amen. You might, I use food as an example a lot. You might have a lust for a Coke and a cream pie. Amen. But you might lust to be backbiting, tail bearing. Amen. And all the rest of that mess. Come on, somebody. We ain't getting into all that. Right? All of that is the lust of the flesh. Amen, somebody. But when you escape the corruption that is in the world through lust, you lay hell on, you hold on to the promises of God, you praise God, magnify God, glorify God, all of a sudden, the presence of God starts to light, hallelujah, your path, hallelujah. And all of a sudden, those things that were on your mind that worked in your nerves, right? All of a sudden, they just grow dim. All of a sudden, they're not working you no more. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who persecute you. Amen. Why? Because they didn't want to do it in the first place. Amen, somebody. 
Amen, somebody. They didn't want to do it in the first place. I mean, what do they mean? They did the blah, 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 blah. No, it was the devil within them that they were obeying. That's right. Amen. Like I said, we all fight principalities and powers. We all fight mites and dominions. Believe me, when it's all said and done, when they stand before the Lord on judgment day, yes. right? And God says, whatever you've done to the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me. I'm telling you right now, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. Amen. That's why the Bible says, pray for those who persecute you. Well, when David was anointed king, the Spirit of God came on him. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came on the prophet, the priest, and the king. In the New Testament, the Spirit of God comes on us when we receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible says that those that are born again, the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Amen. Amen. I just got to run with this bunny trail right now. Amen. You know how valuable praying in the Holy Ghost is to God? Praying in tongues is to God? Philip went down to Samaria. He was an evangelist. And when he went down to Samaria, there were miracles, signs, wonders, and devils cast out. Yes. But when it came to getting them filled with the Holy Ghost, where they'd be speaking and praying in other tongues, he had to send. Amen. For Peter and John. Right. Amen. And they came down and released that power. Yes. Hallelujah. God values His Spirit within you. Because the Bible says, He who speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not to man, but speaketh to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're praying out the mysteries of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In other words, you're praying out His divine purpose for your life. Somebody give the Lord a great big amen for that. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And if you could, I want you to turn in your Bible to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 5. And this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible because this is a story where David really steps in. He's really stepped in to his calling. He's, he's really stepped in to his ministry. And of course, this is right at the beginning of his ministry. And amen. When you got it, say got it. Hallelujah. And we are in 2 Samuel chapter 5. In verse 17, it says, But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to see David. And David heard of it and went down to the hole. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. That is the valley of the giants. Amen. Now the word Philistine means hostile. That's what the word Philistine means. In other words, these were hostile giants. They weren't nice giants. Amen. These were these were hostile giants. Amen. I saw a commercial or something the other day where they've got some movie coming out about this nice giant. Can I tell you something? Giants are not nice. Amen. The Nephilim are not nice. The Nephilim, what they did when they walked the face of the earth, amen, and this is in Genesis chapter 6, Amen. First thing they did is they ate up all the cattle, and after they ate up all the cattle, they started to wear out men. What does that mean? Oh. In other words, after they ate the cattle, they started to eat all the people. Oh. Amen. So, stay away from giants. <laughs> Amen. All right, this is, the, this is the valley of hostile giants. And David inquired of the Lord. Notice David, the first thing he does is he inquires of the Lord. When you got a giant in your land, and you all do, Amen. Inquire of the Lord. Seek the Lord. Saying, shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. And David came to Belpraiser. And David smote them there and said, the Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me as a breach of waters. Therefore, he called the name of the place Belprazim. Belprazim is the God of breakthrough. In other words, he was the God of breakthrough. On this Memorial Day, you need the God of breakthrough. 
Amen. For you men that are in the military, you need the God of breakthrough. Amen. You just don't need, need the God of breakthrough when you're out fighting the enemy. Hello, somebody. But you're going to need the God of breakthrough when you're in the barracks with the men. Amen. You're going to need the God to break you. Why? Because you got to get their heart right. You got to get their thinking right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know what? If I was in the military, you know I'd be quoting Psalm 91. Amen. Amen. A thousand may fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand. But it will not. It will not come by my dwelling. Only with my eyes will I look and behold the reward of the wicked. Come on, somebody. Why? Because he giveth his angels charge over me to keep me in all of my ways. No, he, see, he, Joey, he's got his angels in charge over you, keeping you in all of your ways. That in your path is his life, his life, and there is no death. Somebody give the Lord a great big amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I felt led just to tell this story. Amen. There was a man. Anybody ever hear of Perry Stone? I know a few of you have. Amen. Well, well, his father, Fred Stone, well, was at one time, his brother was in the military. And when he was in the military, he, used to, he was fighting in, uh, I don't know which war it was. It might have been the Korean War. But uh, he was fighting in the Korean War and Fred went to pray. For I'll tell you one thing about Fred. Fred was a praying man. Man, Lord, help me pray like Fred prayed. I do, I pray that prayer. Help me pray like Fred prayed. And he was a praying man. And while he was in prayer, his brother came before his face and he started to pray for his brother. Amen. And you know what? There's a scripture somewhere and it goes something like this. May I not sin against heaven by failing to pray for you. Amen. I don't want to sin against heaven by failing to pray for you. Amen. When people do something against you, just pray for him. Just pray for him. But in this, in this vision, he saw him going up this hill when he saw where he was. And when he saw where he was, he saw him being ambushed. And he prayed to the Lord and he wrote his brother the letter and told him, when you get to this point, you need to avoid this point and go around to your right. And you know what? He fought the... His brother, when he got there, the Holy Spirit quickened to his mind. This is Fred's letter. And he did what he said, and he was completely spared. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a time in Kenneth Hagin's life, amen, where, where his son, Kenneth Hagin Jr., was in the military. And, and Kenneth Hagin was in prayer. And he had a vision. And I can't remember what the vision was, but I remember what the Lord said to him after the vision. He said, if you hadn't sought me concerning your son, he'd be dead right now. Mm. Wow. He'd be dead right now. Mm. Your prayer, you may not know it, but it'll save lives. Yes. It'll save lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mama is praying for their sons. Praise God. Wives praying for their husbands. Praise God. There is no doubt in my mind that I am where I am today in God. Amen. Because of the prayers of my wife. Hello, somebody. Because of the prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Why? Because I'd have quit a long time ago. Amen. In ministry, all the ups and downs you have and all the this and that you have, believe me, it ain't an easy walk. It is not an easy walk. Glory to God. But you know what? The prayers of my wife held me right there. During the good times, she can hold me. And during the bad times, hallelujah. Why? By her prayers. Why? Because she never stops praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, give her a great big amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Amen. When she, work, when she wakes up in the morning, the first thing she does is start to pray over me and speak God's word. Amen. Speak God's word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank God for somebody who can speak the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, verse 21. And it says, And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. Notice their pagan images were burned. Why? Why did they leave them? These ain't any good. I can't trust it. I can't trust in those pagan gods anymore. I can't trust in this. Right. So they run off and leave them. In other words, when the real power of God hits, amen, pagan worship, people get delivered from pagan worship. In other words, they're going to leave Allah. They're going to leave Buddha. Amen. They're going to leave Muhammad. They're going to leave it. 
Hallelujah. And they're going to come to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's a friend that sits closer than a brother. And he will make a way where there is no way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 22. When the Philistines came up yet again. And spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord. Notice they came up twice. And, and he didn't take it for granted the first time. He sought the Lord again. Yes. Amen. He sought the Lord again. That's important. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> and he said, Thou shalt go up, thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. In other words, it's an ambush. Yes. God's given them a plan for an ambush. Yes. And let it be when thou hearest the sound and the going of the tops of the mulberry trees. That when thou be that thou bestir thyself, for then the Lord should go out before thee and smite the host of the Philistines. And David did as the Lord commanded, and he smote the Philistines from Geba until Gaza. Notice he had to wait for the move of the Holy Spirit. But when he waited for the move of the Holy Spirit, he they, he, they said they did bestir themselves. In other words, when the power of God came down, they just didn't sit there. Amen. Yeah, that's right. They just didn't sit there. A lot of people come to church, and you know what they do during the praise and worship and the preaching? They spectate. Hello, somebody. And it's okay when you first come into the Lord. Sometimes you need to spectate. Hello. Hello. Well, you know, I was there. Hallelujah. I remember being in Canton, Ohio. I remember being in a revival. I remember people rejoicing before God. Amen. I remember one girl, she was so drunk in the Holy Ghost, they had to carry her out. Amen. They had one guy and one guy in each limbs, and they chucked her into the back of the car and they drove her home. <laughs> Amen. 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 And I remember standing back there. Hmm. Look at that. That ain't nothing but a bunch of flesh. Look at that. Look at that. I want to tell you something. I came a long way. Amen. Amen. I came a long way. Amen. Hallelujah. In that same camp meeting, I also remember that the pastor, amen, you know, people were running around the church and doing all sorts of stuff that the pastor had never run around the church. Not one time. He, he had never run. He was kind of, you know, he was a teacher. Amen. And, when, and he played the bass at that time. And what he did is the Spirit of God hit him. He put down his bass. I remember this. And he just started jogging around the back of the church. And when he did, all of a sudden, the church became electrified. Yes. I mean, electrified. Because there was a woman without a kneecap jogging behind him. And the more she jogged, the better she got. And she was completely healed by the power of God. Somebody give the Lord a great big amen. I'm telling you, Christ is a healer. Christ is the healer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Praise the Lord. And what we need is we need divine encounters of the God kind. Amen. Divine, divine encounters of the God kind will set you free. Amen. Revelation 19.10 says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's the spirit of prophesy. You need to prophesy to those dead dry bones. Yeah. You need to speak to that dead thing in your life that you want to live. Hallelujah. And once you start prophesying to that, you need to speak to the wind. Amen. God told the prophets, speak to the bones. Then he said, speak to the wind and the power and the glory and the strength of God came into them. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, that dead army got up and lived. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What happens when that happens in your life? People get saved. They get born again. And you know what? You begin to rejoice in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is in my series, You Are a Co-Creator with God. Boy, I got quiet. Boy, I got quiet. You're a co-creator with God. In other words, if God's ever going to do anything, if he's ever going to save anybody, if he's ever going to set anybody free, amen, he's going to use you to do it. Amen. Why? Because God has forever divorced himself from operating independently of the church. That's right. Amen. When he goes to create, he does it through you. Amen. Creative miracles are often a result of the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Hope.
Post prophecy puts faith in action. Why? Because God wants you to give, to give you hope beyond the scope of human limitations. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I was at a church one time. I was preaching. When I was done preaching, they had an altar call. The altar call was full. I went down the line and lay hands on everybody. Hallelujah. You know what I did when I was done? I went home. I went to bed. Two years later, amen, I was down there again and somebody came up to me. A young man came up to me and said, you know what? I, he said, you're the preacher that prayed for my brother. I said, well, praise God. He looked in my eyes. He said, you don't remember it, do you? I said, no, I'm sorry. I don't remember it. He said, you prayed for my brother. He said, he fell out in his church. And he said, when he fell out after that, everything changed. There was no more smoking, no more drinking, no more carousing, no more running after girls. Somebody better give me a witness in the house. Thank you, Lord God. Why? Because somebody prayed. Somebody released the power of God. Now you see, when he came up, he had hope, but I had faith. And that faith was released in his life. Hope is the antecedent condition to faith. It will create a miracle in your life. Amen. Hope causes faith to react. Hope is the catalyst to faith. You've got to have hope. Amen. Why? Because you've got to understand something. You're married to the unseen world. You are married to the unseen world. When we're going through this life, we don't see ourselves as married to the unseen world. Amen. One more scripture. Go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Amen. Because you're married to the unseen world, God wants to release His kingdom, His divine power, His divine presence in your life so you can live in a rhythm of miracles. That's God's desire. God's desire is rarely done on the earth. God says, I wish none should perish, but all should come to repentance. In other words, everybody that perishes is out of the will of God. Everybody that goes to hell is out of the will of God. Because God so loved the world. He loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever. And you know what? The world is full of whosoever's. It's full of whosoever's shall believe on him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And before that great getting up morning, right, which I believe is coming quickly, amen, that great getting up morning, before that happens, we got to get them saved. And the only way you're going to get them saved is becoming a partaker of the divine nature of God. And that's why Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified, What's that? Justified. Just as if you never sinned. Amen. What would your life be like if you never sinned? What would your life be like if you never doubted? What would your life be like if, 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 if? What would your life be like? Well, it is like that as soon as you receive the Lord Amen. and apply His blood over your life. Therefore, having been justified by faith, I have what? Peace. There it is again. Peace where there's nothing missing. And nothing broken. With God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ did something. He gave, a, he gave us peace with God. Boy, somebody needs to say amen on that. Amen. amen. You have peace with God. Whom also we have access by faith. How do you get into the access? Access to what? His divine nature. By faith. Into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. When you rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, it releases power in your life. Where there is no hope, there's a stronghold of the enemy. Yes. Let me try that again. Amen. Where there is no hope, there is a stronghold of the enemy. Whether it's Hope for getting somebody saved, whether it's hope for a new job, whatever you need, whatever you're hoping for, whatever you're believing for. But where there is no hope, right, there's a stronghold of the enemy. Hope produces joy. And we are to rejoice in hope. In other words, hope and joy go together. And when hope and joy go together, you know what they produce? They produce faith. And I want to tell you something. You can have doubt in your head, but faith in your heart. Amen. Amen. 
And God doesn't look at your head. He looks at your heart. Yes. Amen, somebody. Joy is the supernatural emotion of faith. That's what joy is. Happiness is a work of the flesh. Joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Amen. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Keep your joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep your joy. Amen. I'm going to say some great things here that I got written down, and then we're going to close. Amen. And it says, rejoicing empowers faith, and faith moves mountains. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. In other words, if you have a mountain and you want it to move, rejoice in the expected end. Rejoice in the hope. Rejoice in hope. Amen. Hope is born out of a love relationship with God. Amen. You love the Lord. Amen. Well, if you do, you're going to have hope. And that hope is going to cause you to rejoice. Not because of what you see, but because you love the Lord. And that rejoicing is going to produce faith, and that faith is going to move the mountain. Amen. You all need to write this down. Amen. I got it written down. Amen. That's how faith moves mountains. It removes mountains by rejoicing in hope. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Just not what you need. Amen. Tell him what you want. You might want your grandchild saved. Amen. By the way, we have a great grandfather in the house today. Amen. Hallelujah. I call him grandpa too. Give him a great big amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hope is a favorable and confident expectation of a desired end. What's the desired end? What are you believing for? Amen. Faith grows in the soil of hope. Amen. And I'm going to close with this. There was a man. And it said in Mark chapter 4, there was a man that would cast seed in the ground. And he would sleep during the day, and he would rise by day and sleep at night. And the seed grew up there out in the yard. And the Bible says he didn't know how it happened. You know why he didn't know how it happened? It's none of his business. His job was to sow the seed. Amen. And rejoice in the hope of the calling. Amen. And then it says, but immediately. When the harvest came, he put forth the sick. He put forth the sick.